I'm making this video because I have had a number of requests to talk about the construction of these garden beds. So in this video, I'll go over some of the details of how I built them and some of the measurements for you and discuss some of the pros and cons. Now, I can't actually show you the process of building these garden beds because I built them quite some time before I had a YouTube channel. They've been in existence, I think, for around six or seven years now. So it's a reasonable time to evaluate them and I can give you some details how to build them. Raised garden beds are really expensive to buy and so it was quite a strong motivation to me to try and build my own. Having previously had timber garden beds or edges, I realized how quickly they decay. So saw that one of the things that you didn't want to do in construction of a garden bed was to put timber on the inside where it has direct contact with the soil. So I decided to go with the external frame concept. This way, the timber being on the outside has weather but doesn't have that direct contact with the soil. Now there was a second thing that drove me that direction and that is that one of the cheapest timbers that I could buy was a treated pine and that's what this is built from. So that drove two decisions. One, putting it on the outside so it wasn't in contact with my growing soil. The second was actually painting it. By painting it I hoped to reduce the amount of chemical contamination to the garden bed. Now, I was happy enough that I had achieved a minimization of that chemical uh, contamination by doing those two things. You may prefer still to use a hardwood, which would work just fine. Probably more expensive if you're buying it, but would be excellent if you can use a hardwood. You may still want to paint it to increase its lifespan. Now, to give you some sizings, these are a half uh, width bed so that of a sheet of colour bond, I've actually split it down the middle and used half the width. So you get 400 high instead of, uh, that's approximately 16 inches instead of the full sheet, which is 825. I quite like this size bed and find it fairly easy to work with. One of the factors with the shorter bed is it doesn't require as much filling and doesn't dry out as much as the really high beds do. The high beds, however, mean that you don't do as much bending. So it's something that you've got to weigh up. They also, of course, are using more materials. Now, you'll see that I have a single piece of, this is 75 by 50 that I've used, which runs along the top here and I've used it in a way to maximize its strength from that pressure to push outwards. It also works to actually cover the edge of the iron so that you're not actually interacting with that sharp edge. The pieces going down of course stop the bend as well and support this. Now there is no base rail on these beds because I've used concrete around them and I intended to do that when I built them. So that the concrete actually stops any uh, expansion of material at the bottom. So it wasn't necessary. If you're not using the concrete, you may want to use a base rail. I was also reasonably confident in this design that I would be able to actually replace pieces of this timber as I needed to. And there is one piece down on one of these garden beds that has some fungus growing in it. It is decaying. So I do need to actually replace that in the maintenance that needs to be done on these garden beds now. But before I talk about the maintenance factor with these, I'll give you some measurements. In length, they are two and a half meters. There is this dropped factor here that where I've got two beds together, one is dropped lower, and that is simply because of the slope of the land. Now, I don't really recommend this unless you're actually facing it towards the sun, or that's north here in Tasmania, because the piece that is close underneath can get some shade. 
and I found that is a problem here because I'm facing east and not north. So in hindsight, I probably would do things a little differently. But that's the way you learn, by trying and finding what doesn't work. The width is 900, and that is the width between these two pieces that's 900 across, that's three feet. But you can vary it to whatever, of course, you would like. I use this width because I like to be able to reach to the opposite side from one side whenever I need to. Now, that's my maximum reach across there. Now, you might say walk around the other side and, and work halfway, but it saves a lot of time just to be able to reach over if you need to grab something from the other side. And the 900 accommodates a couple of rows. In one of these beds, I can grow, say, three zucchini plants, as I am now, and you can grow quite a lot of uh, vegetables, and I find it a really good size to work with. So two and a half meters long, 900 wide and 400 in height. The spacing between the upright pieces that support the top rail and keep the sides from bowing is 750 or two foot six. At that spacing, I don't see any bowing occurring on these half height beds. You possibly could go a little bit further between but for me that worked really nicely. Uh, I should say that spacing is centre to centre, so in between of course would be a little bit less. Now on the corners here you'll notice that I've just run the ends over uh, the side uh, piece which is a bit like a ladder and on the other end I have put a little piece of flashing over it and that was simply put there to protect my garden hose when I pulled it around the corner so that it didn't uh, cut on the edge of the color bond. The end piece is simply a rail that holds the two side ladders, shall we call them, together. And there's no uprights on the ends because at the 900 spacing, it's not really necessary. Now, as I said, there is quite a bit of maintenance requirement with these. As you'll see, they're now starting to look quite tatty and really need to be repainted. So this is work really that can only be done at this type of situation like this bed in front of me when there's nothing growing in it or plants are very small because when you've got full growth vegetation, it's really hard to get it the beds. So the maintenance mostly is going to be just clean it up and repaint. I think ideally that should be done about every five years. That way you're going to keep your timber in good condition and keep it looking fairly good as well. Now, the timber has a couple of advantages, and particularly having it this way. One is that you can sit on it, of course, like I'm doing right now. The other is that you can also stand on it. When you've got tall uh, growing things like these beans that you want to pick or do maintenance on, you can actually stand on it as well. Now, the question that I ask myself is, would I build these again? And the answer is really, I probably wouldn't. I would prefer to use an all metal system or a metal and PVC system like I've used in the greenhouse, which has virtually no maintenance to it. It's going to last a long, long time without any work. The downside of that, of course, is that I don't have those two factors that I can't sit on the edge so easily, nor can I stand on it. But I'm prepared to give those up in return for not having to do the maintenance. Anyway, that gives you a few uh, factors about these beds and hopefully some ideas how to construct them and have a go. Look, making your own beds is really worthwhile. You can save huge amounts of money over going and buying them.